Hey guys, this is Stefan Kumra of Obscura and Tulkandra and you're watching Interview on the Fire. That was great. Uh, Stefan, thank you so much for uh, coming back on our show. It's been a couple years uh, since we last spoke on uh, IUF. I know it's been a lot has happened from 2021 to 2023. Somehow it's been two years. And you dropped a new album during that time span, A Validation, which is holding up quite well. Um, first off, uh, I mean, Happy New Year. It's 2023, right? Somehow. And have you had the chance to just take this all in with the reception, with the album drop, and now you're coming to the States? I mean, does it feel like time has went by in a blink at the same, you know? It's, for me, it has. I mean, since we spoke two years ago, and now we're here. <laughs> Well, we have been in the, in the States a year ago during the pandemic, which was kind of a lot of headache and a lot of hassle. I mean, you can imagine how that affects a touring band, but hey, we soldiered through, we made all of that happen. And as we speak right now, yeah. um, many of those projects we started like two years ago now come to life. So this is very, very exciting and uh, it feels like a big reward and on top. It feels like not all the work we did in the last two years was for nothing, but everything builds up on each other. So, to be honest, I'm very, very happy to be here right now. Uh, today we're in Dallas, in Texas, in one of my favorite uh, venues, Amplify Life, and uh, life couldn't be better. And speaking about this tour, by the way, great venue. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to play here in the past. Um, this venue underwent a rebranding. It used to be called the Gas Monkey back in the day, and now it's amplified. Let's talk about this tour, because you guys are alongside bands like Clush God Apocalypse, uh, Wolfheart, and of course your other band, Dolkandra, and we've had all those other bands respectively on our show, so shout out to them. Uh, this tour, you know, you guys were just in Houston last night, we're well into this tour. How has this tour been? Are, are you getting a chance to spend time in these cities that you're visiting? Because it's been a while since you came back to the States. It has been a while, I mean, one year, but the big difference is now everything is open. Um, there are no restrictions Thankfully. or anything. <laughs> Thankfully to that. But on top, um, the touring package is really, really strong. So um, around a year ago, I think in February, I came up with this, this approach asking Flash Good Apocalypse mm -hmm. uh, to make a tour together. Because this is something I wanted to do for a very long time. The guys have a very good reputation. They work their asses off, they are world-class musicians, all of them, and uh, I always wanted to tour with like-minded people, Yeah, you know? And uh, <laughs> on top, this opens the opportunity to bring my, uh, my second band on tour to Canberra. So to come back to your question, I do not have any time at any day <laughs> because <laughs> I'm doing, uh, I'm pulling double duties every night. So uh, two sound checks, two shows, uh, two setups, but I don't regret anything. I enjoy every minute on this tour. This Speaking, is, yeah, it, it's it's great. It's great to hear all that too. I was gonna say about Bill Kandra. I mean, is that does that provide a challenge for someone like you bringing two different acts on the same tour? And I mean, it's it's a lot to take in, you know. But it's like you have to go back and twice, almost have two different mindsets on how to operate two different bands. Is it a challenge for that, or are you just, or is this just second nature to you at this point? At this point. It's, it's, everything is like a, an automatism, yeah. but uh, both bands work entirely different, they have entirely different setups, one band works with in-ears, the other band is pure rock and roll, so you have to adapt yeah. and adjust every day, but within this, this framework with the Finnish band Wolfheart and uh, Flash Good Apocalypse, we somehow found the, the, the golden line, the, the thin line in between to combine a black metal band with uh, a rather tech, death, proggy metal shred band. It's a perfect so. combination. It, yeah. it really shows two sides. I think it shows two sides for someone like you, you know, because you know you have this side where you have Volcandra and another side to you where you have Obscura. I really feel like as it from my perspective, and we talked about this briefly when we did the interview a couple years ago, how Volcandra almost is an extension of who you are in Obscura. It's like what you can't do in Obscura, you're doing it with Volcandra. I think that's a very creative way to approach it. Yeah. I don't know if you see it the same yeah. way. And vice versa. What yeah. I do with Wukandra, I can't do uh, with Obscura. But both both musical styles are basically in my DNA as a musician, and I love it. And uh, playing with both bands is uh, simply pure joy. I, I love it. And uh, with this with this package, it's not only my my 
feeling that this could work, but we have like 10 sold out shows already all over the place. Like all Canadian shows have been sold out. Bravo. Um, <laughs> New York has been sold out. It looks like Los Angeles and San Diego will be sold out as well. It's hilarious how, how well this all works together. So we are all happy. The vibe is fantastic within the bands as well. Yeah. The, the crew works together. It can't be better. I always wonder, you know, uh, when we did, when we spoke last time, I, I always find questions like chemistry between different members of the same band, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked about it. In, in a, a Valediction, I mean, you guys had so much chemistry on that record. I still listen to it today. It's such a great record and it really, really expanded Obscura's catalog. But in other aspects, I want to ask about the, you know, we talked about Flesh God and Wolfheart. Do you think it takes chemistry for different bands to work together on a tour? Because you guys are bringing in Flesh God Apocalypse, who are a staple in the symphonic metal industry, of course. And, and the real part with their melodic that you guys bring in with your tech death elements. I always wonder, I feel like these bands complement each other as you're going through this lineup. Because you talk about how exciting this creative package is, not just for you, but even for the fans. They're able to see this, this lineup uh, night in and night out. As I mentioned, it's a framework that just uh, helps each other. Yeah. And uh, the bottom line, it's all a matter of respect. And each band respects the other band, and again, we help each other. Like, sometimes you have small venues, sometimes uh, yeah. on the road, things happen, things break. Mur Murphy's Law, everything that can be happen, yeah. that will can happen. happen, will happen, definitely. And we soldier through with everyone. And, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of music you play, it, it always matters what, uh, what your approach is, your personal approach. I mean, you usually treat people that you want to get treated. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what we do, that's what all four bands on this bill do, and also the local bands. So, it's all a matter of respect, and then uh, fans just pick it up. And the, the cherry on the ice is yeah. simply the fact that this tour is that successful, that it simply underlines our, our point of view. So we are here at Amplify Live, right? We spoke about this earlier. One thing that really makes Amplify Live is not only music, but the food here. I know you told me that you don't have a chance to spend time in all of these cities that you've been at so far. Tell me about the food you've been eating on the road. I know it's a challenge. Like, what's what? What do you, are you staying on a certain like certain diet that you have to have, or are you just trying everything you can when you're on the road before you head back over to Europe? You know, I always wonder things like that. Like in Texas, obviously barbecue, which you can get if you do decide after the show. Yeah. But tell me something about that, like things that you're doing on the road, like food. What are you listening to on the road? Are you guys gaming on the road and things like that? Um, I'm not gaming at all. Um, <laughs> okay. It's not my kind of thing. I, I stopped yeah. that somewhere in the early 90s, I think. <laughs> but uh, when it comes to food, different story. I try to, uh, to adapt everything where I am. doesn't matter if it's the United States or in particular Texas. Mm -hmm. um, we tour internationally, we tour worldwide, and I try to give everything a certain taste, or, or try everything I, I can get, even stuff I usually don't eat every day. For example, not, I don't like fish too much, but okay. I, if I'm in Japan, I try it. What and have you tried on this tour so far that stood out? Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Taco Bell, the staple of... You can call it as a staple of American food. So I, I, I tried it the first time I visited the States in 2009, and I swear to God, I will never try it again. I did it again, and <laughs> which one, Taco Bell? Taco Bell. Okay, so uh, are you done with Taco Bell for the rest of this tour, or <laughs> for the rest of my life? <laughs> so, so yeah, probably not the best. Yeah, that's you know when it comes to touring, that's the whole challenge within itself because. You know, when people come to Texas, it's like the barbecue stands yeah. out. You know, it's you know, it's it's really about you know the like the steaks and like like, like meat and like it's just everything is just so everything's bigger in Texas. That's the that's the common saying. I was wondering if someone like me were to go to Germany, what would be the like the food or like the place to you know be at? You know, I don't know how often you get asked this question. Not that often, actually. Um, depending where you are going to, Germany is a small country, uh -huh. but each region differs from each other entirely. It's like yeah, California and Texas. Like, really? Okay. So you're, you said you're from Munich. I'm from the Munich okay, area. Okay. Like. So what's a popular, I guess, a popular dish in the Munich area? You know, it's. I feel like you know the answer to this already as I'm asking you. Oh, there are many answers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, everything that contains meat. 
very meat based, uh, yeah. potatoes, sauerkraut, anything that is uh, not common over here. <laughs> um, but I would recommend simply to try out everything. And uh, same as in Texas and Germany, you go to a restaurant, if you don't know any of those dishes, yeah. you just ask and you feel welcome because people let you try something if you don't know it. That's for example something I really like uh, over here. It doesn't matter if you go to a waffle house, if you go to a really nice steakhouse or somewhere else, you feel welcome. And this is, this is uh, for me personally, a very important part of uh, uh, the gastronomy. Yeah. If you have a shitty service, the food doesn't taste good. <laughs> and vice versa. Also true. If things happen in the kitchen and shit happens, um, you solve it with a smile you will go there again anyway yeah. and over here I feel welcome every time when I meet people every time it doesn't matter if I if I uh, play a show in the north in the early days when you slept at uh, houses in, on floors somewhere uh, in those good punk, punk rock days no tour bus no nothing and that's something I, I really enjoy over here and I respect you you have strangers and you, you come as a stranger and you leave as, as a friend. That's the saying yeah. we have. And this is something I feel over here every time. I'm, Little things I'm like here. that really start to stand out too, the more and more you do it. I mean, if anything, the pandemic has taught me. It's a little thing like that I'm, I'm really thankful for. Getting a chance to speak to awesome people like you, you know, and, and getting a chance to do all this. You know, you got, you got this tour finishing up in, what, uh, soon. I think, I feel you're going to wrap up this tour pretty soon. Yeah, on what the 60s. You, yeah. Um, what do you have lined up for the rest of the... Just the road. As we finish this interview off, I know your fans like. I know Validation's been a year and a half since it's been out. Are you already working on new music? Because it's. <laughs> uh, we, have, we have a couple of projects going on. Yeah. After finishing this tour, we leave straight from the stage to LAX International Airport, go to Australia to play a show after, the day after in Melbourne yeah. and Sydney. And uh, after Australia, we're just going home. We play a couple of festivals. We work on more tours, new music, a live record, a band biography, a band documentation. There are so many new things going on. And it's, uh, as I mentioned, everything that holds us back during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, we try to channel it somehow, different, uh, working on video projects, uh, doing a lot of music videos and all that. But everything else that got held back now comes out and this is this is very really cool so I, I think of this and next year we have more projects to work on with especially Obscura than we did in the last five six years. Having said that I want to finish with this because I feel like this is important and, and I this has been on my mind this whole time 21 years man you've been at this for a while everything we talked about from the last time we spoke to where you are now you know uh, your journey with Obscura, you've seen the lineup changes. You've been here since the beginning, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you have another side project with Dolcantra. Back and forth, and I gotta ask you, do you ever just stop for a moment to take a look back at how far you've come? Because you've built this entire, I, I would say even like a legacy for yourself, because there are you know, tech death bands coming out from the surface who are saying, citing bands like Obscura as influential pieces in their life. Know? Do you think about things like that? Because it's, it's an important thing to know. It's two decades and more, it's not easy to stick around, but you've done it. That's true. Yeah. In my life, I founded two bands. It's Obscura and Turkandra. Yeah. And Turkandra just uh, came to life a year after Obscura. And I never did anything else. I had a stint at uh, Death to All, which was something really special, mm -hmm. but I always focus on those two bands and this since more than 20 years. I picked up a guitar and uh, six months later I found it obscure and uh, this is where we are right now and I would love to simply have the same vibe and the same feeling in another 20 years. So if, if we meet together in 20 years oh, and I can will. still tell I'm you... I'm already thinking about it. <laughs> and I, I, I can still tell you, hey, yeah. I love what I'm doing, I love traveling the world and I, I play for... Uh, Friends that also enjoy it after 20 years more. Uh, I'm a very lucky person. Stefan, well, we are very lucky people, man. So keep doing Thank what you. you're doing. Go crush it out there. Um, I'll see you down the road. I know we'll do this again. It's always great to have you back on our show. We our conversation's always been great. You know, I can't wait to do this again. Um, and uh, yeah, you take care, man. Have a great tour for, for the rest of the year. I'll see you around. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs>